Hi, I'm Mark, and I wanted to give a quick update on what's going on with Solace and Spring CloudStream. We just saw our latest release of our Spring CloudStream binder, and it included a bunch of enhancements. So I just wanted to talk about some of those with you all today. Um, so I'm going to give a quick intro to Spring CloudStream for those that are not familiar with it. If you are familiar, go ahead and skip forward in the video about a minute or so, and I'll jump into the enhancements there. So if you're not familiar with Spring CloudStream, um, Spring CloudStream is, of course, built on the Spring framework. And it's an easy way for developers that are using JVM languages, such as Java, to create highly scalable event-driven microservices. It allows you to create a source app which publishes messages, a sync app that consumes messages, or a processor that's a combination of the two without having to learn messaging APIs. There's this transport binder, which I'm going to be talking about our new enhancements for the Solace one in a minute, that kind of has the abstraction layer between your code and between your event broker of choice. So this allows you to write spring code and just generic spring beans um, that basically process events without having to know the Solace API, the Rabbit API, the Kafka API, et cetera. And so, yeah, it is an abstraction framework for events. As a developer, you just need to understand the different patterns or, that are supported by the framework. So we have persistent publish subscribe, consumer groups, and stateful partitioning support. And just as a quick example here, um, I've got some code here that shows you basically just create a generic spring bean and this spring bean gets wired up by the Solace binder and by the Spring CloudStream framework um, and allows it to receive a string in this case and uppercase that string and then publish out the updated string. And that's you know um, packaged into a message and goes out onto the event mesh to be consumed by your other apps. So that is the quick intro. Um, but if you want to learn more, head over to uh, our developer hub at solace.dev. So this is a one-stop shop for everything that a developer will need to get started with Solace, and in this case, Spring CloudStream as well. So you can spin up a Docker container or a cloud instance, and if you scroll down the page, you'll find Spring here. You can choose Spring CloudStream. It tells you how to get the, the framework, the API, the binder, add it to your app, whether you're using Maven or Gradle, or you can start from scratch using Spring Initializer, how to connect your service, and how to learn more. And on all these pages, it also brings you to the docs for the project. And so once you have the docs for the project, um, this it's included in the Saw Spring Cloud project, our, our CloudStream binder. And so if you head over to our releases here, our, our latest was 2.0.0 that got released um, at the end of February 2021. And in here, there's a whole bunch of changes that were made. So you can go through and read the release notes. I'm gonna focus on a few key ones today. Um, so without further ado, let me go ahead and kind of jump back into that. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is manual message acknowledgement. So actually, let me go ahead and just share my, my code instead. So for manual message acknowledgement, I'll go ahead and uncomment this. I have some code here to show it. For, for manual message acknowledgement, I essentially have this function here to demonstrate its use. And so it's taking in a message that contains a string payload and it's outputting a different string payload. And so essentially, if you if by default, Spring Cloud Stream does an auto act. So if your function returns successfully or just exits, um, the message will be acknowledged. And if your function were to throw an exception, the message would be um, in errors thrown and it's retried. And then after a certain amount of times, it's thrown back um, to the binder and put back on the queue for reprocessing. But if you want more control over that, because you know you're handling a message, um, you can specify this acknowledgement callback um, object here. And this allows you to disable the auto acknowledgement. And then as you process your business logic and you're, you have successfully processed the message, you can essentially accept, um, you can do, use the accutils object 
to accept the message. Um, if processing didn't go successfully, then you have the option of rejecting the message or commented out here, you can requeue the message. And so there's a few options there. And again, if you head over um, to our documentation here, it will go through the different options and things to look out for, et cetera. So that's the update for manual message acknowledgement. Um, so let's see. The next update I wanna talk about is expanded header capabilities. So one of the things that we have allowed folks to do in this latest release is we explicitly allow you to, to get and set Solace headers. So again, in the uh, docs here in the readme, in the repo, it has all the information, but just to quickly um, show it via code, I have a method here, so if I uncomment that. Again, in this case, we're taking in a message object and we're outputting a message object. And so we can now say like, because we get the message object, we can say message get headers and then retrieve whatever headers we want. So in this case, I'm getting the application message ID and I'm receiving the destination. So this was one thing that was tricky before in Solace is because the CloudStream binder consumes from a queue, which is subscribed to topics, in your code, you didn't really have that information. So if you need to apply business logic based on the topic, um, and a lot of our users, uh, well, hopefully, it, the recommended way to use Solace topics is to have that topic really define your event and the different levels in your topic might map to different variables that could be used in your business logic. So this now allows you to retrieve that destination and use that as part of your business logic. So you can see how you can retrieve the headers here, you can then process your business logic. And then on the outbound side, you can also set headers. So you can set things like the expiration or the correlation ID. And I also wanna call out here, um, not only does this allow you to set and get traditional Solace headers, but some of those headers also map directly to JMS headers. So we did have some users before that have legacy JMS applications and they're building their new applications using Spring Cloud Stream. And this allows you now to get things like the JMS message ID or the JMS correlation ID, uh, et cetera, to allow that to be you know, simpler for the developer to build these new apps that interact with like the legacy JMS apps. Um, two other updates from a header perspective that I'm not gonna show, but they are in the docs, is there's an ability to exclude headers from outgoing messages. So if you have headers that are, you know, are large or not serializable or something that you don't want to publish out to be received by downstream applications, you can now exclude those in the config. And also we have a new option, a new publisher option to convert non-serializable headers to strings. And so previously you could not include a non-serializable header in an outgoing message. So that has now changed. All right. The, the next update that I think a lot of folks will be interested in is, let's see, how about topics in, what, in the wildcard, uh, topics in the actual destination itself. So if I open up the config here, um, you can see I'm, I'm essentially defining my input binding here on an, on an uppercase function. So uppercase in zero defines my binding. And previously what I would have to do is in the destination, um, I would have to have some name for, for that would be included in the name of my queue. And then we had a field called queue additional subscriptions, which still exists, um, where you could define one or more subscriptions that would use Solace, Solace wildcards. In this release, we have changed that a little bit. So if you just have one topic subscription, such as hello slash greater than, you can now include this straight away in the destination and you no longer have to specify those extra configurations. So that's a simple enhancement there that makes it easy for simple apps that have one subscription. Uh, again, using the wild cards to take advantage of the different levels of the Solace topic hierarchy. And the last update that I want to talk about is the expansion of consumer er error handling. So I didn't actually create an app for this um, to showcase it, but if you head over to the readme and go to failed error, message error handling. You can read all about it here, but essentially 
we we had some developers that were confused before because in the binder we had the concept of a dead message queue and then obviously solace as a messaging system itself our, our message broker or our event broker also had the concept of a dead message queue so we have changed this so in the binder you have the ability to auto bind an error queue and so the error queue allows you to you know if you're processing a message and there's some sort of error processing that message and you know no matter no matter how many times i retry this i'm going to get the error you can say okay publish that to to the error queue um and then still take advantage of solace's dead message queue capabilities so if something were to happen where you decide to requeue that message back to the event broker then after a certain configurable number of retries that will fall to the dead message queue in the broker. So kind of just giving you more options to handle errors that occur on the consumer side of things. So again, go ahead and head over to our docs and you can read more, you can read up more about this. Um, but some of this is really cool, especially when coupled with the manual or client acknowledgements that I talked about earlier. So that was it. Let me um, say, you know, thank you for joining me. If you have any questions about Spring CloudStream, please head over to Solace Community at solace.community. I think you can see it in the little ticker below. Um, I'm, I, I, myself and others are, are active in the community and can help, can help answer your questions, point you to the proper samples, et cetera. And thanks, I hope you have a good experience with Spring CloudStream. And let me know if you don't because we can try to enhance things and improve the overall experience as well. So thanks and have a great day.